G'day folks, ZD here with the new Atlas Passive Tree. I wanted to make a quick video talking about a core, very fundamentally simple, straightforward, juicy uh, strategy for the Atlas Passive Tree. But first, make sure that you don't listen to what anyone tells you to do when it comes to the Atlas Tree. <laughs> Not even me, don't listen to me, don't listen to anyone. Literally, just pick whatever you think is most fun. You want to do Delve stuff? Type Delve into the search bar, pick all the Delve nodes, add some other things in you like the most. Literally, don't tell you, this is the most, like, customizable, personal sort of taste thing. It's a bit different to a character build, right? Like, even character builds in PoE, you should always change them based on whatever the build guy says. You make your own adjustments to make it more suited to you. But builds cannot work if you get the passive tree wrong you'll stop being able to kill stuff and you'll keep dying. But with this, you can't really go wrong. The worst thing you could do is take like a mechanic, say like Beyond or something, and then not have anything that's activating it so that it's not present on your maps and you're not benefiting. In which case, you've just got like a slightly suboptimal, less efficient uh, amount of like income that you're getting and benefit that you're getting from your expenditure. But that's like the worst thing that can happen. So literally just do whatever you think is going to be most fun. Focus on the content you want to do. But that said, if you don't want to think about it too much, and you want to start off with something pretty straightforward that focuses on very some very simple straightforward uh, strategies that don't involve any boss killing or any side content at all, then uh, that's what I've kind of planned this out. There'll be no bricking here, and then you can modify it to your tastes after that point. You can adjust it for more late game strategies after you progress, but hopefully you'll earn like a lot of nice currency, get a lot of XP and stuff in the process. So I've kept things very straightforward. So this breaks down into three very simple mapping strategies, and the only thing you really kind of want to start doing long term is craft using the crafting bench so i've tried to not incorporate any other stuff we're not worrying about sexton strategies or necessarily even scarabs or any of that sort of stuff just the crafting bench you've got three strategies strategy one i'm going to get xp you chuck domination on for shrines strategy two i want to get currency you chuck abyss on which we'll get into why later strategy three i don't know what i'm doing and i just want to put something on there and not have to think about it Fortune favors the brave. <laughs> really good stuff. Super straightforward. There's your three strategies. And one of those strategies is I don't even want to think of a strategy. I just want to do something. I just want to play. Perfect. So I've got all that covered. So let's go through what this is trying to achieve then. And uh, this whole thing is a lot of fun. So what this is doing is adding guaranteed bonus mechanics to your maps that you don't have to do anything extra for and just give you a lot of nice reward without taking you out of the game too much. So I'm not like doing anything like giving you a bunch of sulfites so you go into delves. I'm not having you build temples or any of that sort of stuff. What sort of things we do have is a bonus additional essence per zone. You can get this after four maps. One, two, three, four maps completed. And then you unlock the atlas, the, sorry, the additional essence per map. And every single map you do from then on in the atlas will have an additional essence monster in it. Same thing with additional strong boxes here. We've also got an additional shrine and additional harbinger. We then tack on a couple extra things to do with rogue exiles and uh, abyss je jewels because there's a lot of potential there and then supplement with some stuff that boosts your core progression so things that give you some extra kirak missions which you can then later tailor things that give you extra higher tier maps and things that help you kind of fill out your map pool as you progress your atlas so that's kind of the fundamentals here so we'll talk about a little bit of a progression strategy as well, kind of in a general sense. But again, don't be afraid to change anything. Drop nodes you don't care about. You end up hating doing one particular part of this. Drop it, pick up something else you prefer anyway. But this is also with 15 points remaining. So this is only map completion, like map bonus objective, objective completion. No boss kills and no maven stuff. So this is all doable without that. I've intentionally left 15 points remaining, which means this is just regular map completion. So... We'll start off by picking up Essence and then Strong Boxes straight away. And then after your first like eight or nine or 10 maps or whatever, you'll uh, just be getting an extra Strong Box and Essence per every single map that you do. Great stuff. I would probably go ahead and take this one nice and early as well, Spoils of War. Extra rare monsters in each map. It duplicates rares, up to three rares per zone. And then rares will drop, uh, have a 1% chance, 1 in 100 for each rare, but there's, you're killing a lot of rares in total per map. And then over the course of your play session, as you complete multiple maps, and uh, they're all just going to drop extra currency and extra jewelry, which is very good early on, but also uh, even very good long term. You can get some more jewelry and sell those off as, like, in terms of picking up rares, jewelry is one of the few rares you actually do pick up in Path of Exile that can be worth it. So uh, very nice stuff there. So at that point, we have a couple of options. 
about uh, about kind of continuing, I would probably go and pick up the shrines, extra shrines. So that that uh, gives you a lot of extra monsters to kill. You start getting XP faster, more drops and stuff, etc. As well, but also the shrine effects, which can boost your map clear too. Um, and then this has like got a cute little duration of shrines, so the shrines last fifty percent longer too. So you pick up that, you get that acceleration shrine, it lasts you for the rest of the map, which is very cool. And then you can head on over and get this upgrade for essences. So now that we've got all the core mechanics enabled, basically, we'll start upgrading them. So we can go over here and get Crystal Lattice. Or we could save this one for a little bit later once we have some of the other payoffs. But if you want to start collecting some essences early on, maybe to craft your own gear, this is a lot of extra essences over here. Really, you can kind of path this however you want. But then we want to go get our additional Harbinger as well pretty early on. So like I said about getting the Shrine, that's right across from that. So probably Shrine straight into Harbinger and then consider doing more upgrades. Um, we have... Uh, the Abyss stuff we will leave for a little bit longer. So we'll travel through the Kirak nodes here. And what this side does is it gives you extra scouting reports, which allow you to re-roll Kirak's missions, and then extra Kirak missions. So this is just extra Kirak, which is the new Zana, which is just kind of extra maps that you get to do. And some of those maps will have nice bonuses. Late game, you'll want to shift this over to the other side to do some late game stuff. So after you've kind of like gotten into red maps, your character's starting to get kind of strong, probably want to pick up this side instead, which makes Kirak's missions higher quality, and then gives you these fancy scouting reports that get, allow you to introduce yourself, maybe you haven't done some higher level content before, introduce yourself to some higher level kind of fancier content in Path of Exile. So this has anointed blighted maps for the blight mechanic, we have delirium maps, and we have breach stones, actual breach stone runs. So you can start to introduce yourself to some of that kind of, uh, kind of higher level side content. But in the early game, though, we can just go to the left side, which is a bit simpler. In terms of progression routing from here on out, I'm honestly not sure. I would kind of... <laughs> probably I'm going to stick with some of the Atlas progression boosting stuff first and then go for a little bit more currency, but I might feel that out as, a, as I go. Uh, so in the middle here, we have extra map drop tiers as higher. So whenever a map drops, they have a chance of dropping one tier higher. So this will allow you to speed up your progression, get better maps on average. We're going to grab both of these notables as well. So this is another 15% and another 15% over here. Uh, this one long-term allows you to get more of the maps that you prefer once you use the favored map system. And then on shaping the valleys here, this is for that fortune favors the brave strategy. It's a nice boost to that quantity, rarity, and pack size. Whenever you use this thing, fortune favors the brave. So all of those maps will uh, have a nice little boost to them. Over here we have some of the essence combinations. So we actually have a two-piece essence combination here. So this is where we, if we want to really start ramping our essence side of things, which I think is really good value, we have amplified energies, which essences found in areas are one tier higher. So that means if there's a tier five essence, it'll become a shrieking. So if there's a, I think it's screaming goes into shrieking. Uh, so we can pick up that one. And then this one here is extremely spicy. Monsters imprisoned uh, by a shrieking essence will duplicate when released. So whenever you have a monster that has upgraded to a tier 6, whether you corrupted it with a remnant of corruption, which we have the nodes for here, or whether it got upgraded by this notable, that monster will be duplicated and you'll get two of them. Now, all, all things told together when combined with this cluster over here that I talked about earlier, which gives a ton of extra additional essences, if this works like I think it does, you have a chance for one additional essence here from these miners, and then a chance for three additional essences, and then a chance for an additional remnant of corruption. All of these things added together means that you can have monsters with like eight essences and a remnant of corruption, which is nine total essences on a single monster. <laughs> this will only happen sometimes, but... And then you can have that duplicated. So you can have one essence encounter that gives you 19 essences, 18 essences, uh, which is uh, certainly interesting. <laughs> So that's 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 pretty uh, that's pretty spicy. I like that a lot. So there's the there's the there's your like essence package, and uh, maybe you haven't really farmed essences before, but essences are extremely easy to sell in bulk. If you have the essence uh, premium tab, it's even easier, where you uh, upgrade all your essences to tier five, six, or seven, and then just sell like five of them at once for like forty five chaos or an exalt or something like that. Uh, super easy to do. They're also great for crafting your own gear early on and later on if you have specific sorts of gear for your build that you're focusing on. Uh, so many different builds can benefit from them and so many people, whenever they buy essences, they want to buy like five or ten at once. So essence is really easy currency and the content 
is you just click a thing, kill a monster, and pick up some stuff. There's no extra thought required there. So super simple and straightforward. So we can go back to some of these other ones. So what about the shrines? What are we doing with the shrines? Well, this has a handy little feature where we can click out the pop out for shrines. The shrine one is fairly straightforward. It's extra monsters per map. So this is extra XP and it allows us to uh, put on the uh, domination for even more shrines and then boost that a little bit more with this later node over here. So this one has additional shrines and then monsters a uh, half of the time will have an additional pack of monsters. And then all of the time we'll have at least one magic pack of monsters, which is a lot of extra XP. So that means that at a minimum, every single map has half an extra pack on average and one extra magic pack. But whenever there's more shrines on top of that, you will get more magic packs. So if there's four shrines in a map, you'll get four magic packs. That's a lot of extra XP and drops. So very straightforward. It's just those two clusters for shrines. There is another cluster up here that gives some fancy magic find stuff, but I don't know how good that's going to be. So I didn't include that in the core thing just there. What about the Harbingers? So the Harbinger package is here. We've got all three for this one. So we have the additional Harbinger that we picked up at the beginning, which is just always giving us a lot of extra little currency shards, great stuff, as well as good XP. And then with the other two combined, we get more additional Harbingers. They drop additional currency shards, a chance for those currency shards to turn into actual currency items. So whenever there's like an Exalted Shard dropping or a Chaos Shard, they'll actually just drop as a Chaos or an Exalted Shard. Sometimes, <laughs> not always. Uh, so that's good stuff. Also, this makes them a bit faster to fight, I believe, as well, which is nice. Um, and then we've got more additional Harbingers here. And then occasionally they will be replaced by a Harbinger boss, which gives you a lot more than the regular one. So it just makes those Harbinger encounters a lot nicer. They're just raw currency, those are. You literally just pick up raw currency and put it in your stash. Nothing to worry about there. So what else do we have? We have strong boxes. There's our strong boxes. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Where did our strong box? They're hiding down the bottom there. So for the strong boxes, also very straightforward, but super nice. We get the extra strong box per map guaranteed. Then in here, we get operative strong boxes, which drop scarabs. Scarabs, I think, are core. They're fundamental. They're very valuable. They're easy to sell in bulk, but also they're really good to use as well. They add extra effects to your maps and make them spicier. Uh, we also have one of the lines here. You can pick whichever one you prefer. Over here is divination cards duplicated. Map items duplicated, so if you're really trying to progress your atlas as much as possible, you might take the middle one. And then the bottom side is currency dropped by strong boxes is duplicated. Very fun. And more chance to see Arcanist strong boxes as well. This one's pretty optional, but I think quite worth it. But you could totally drop these. Again, change whatever you like here. If you think this one isn't really paying out for you, you're not seeing enough currency strong boxes, you don't really care, you can drop all of those and pick up another cluster for a specific mechanic, you know, Delve or Abyss or whatever else that you want to upgrade. So that's, that's all those core ones there. We have a few extra other little things that are just generally very good. So over here we have three extra rare monsters per map. And then rare monsters drop additional currency and jewelry. Fantastic. Easy, easy. There's a cute little one in here that's an optional extra that gives map monsters drop additional unique items and chance for faded uniques. Depending on which faded uniques haven't been fixed by GGG yet, now, this is only a temporary one. This might be worth picking up if you want to chase a specific faded or if some of them are worth pretty good currency, but it's probably pretty low value. But that's why I didn't take it in the end. Uh, have I accidentally clicked off this? Yeah, whenever I drag the screen around, I accidentally allocate nodes or unallocate them. I clicked one. <laughs> Chat, chat's got me covered. <laughs> and over here, we have another generic nice upgrade. So maps drop higher tiers and then shaping the skies here, which gives you uh, fancy crafts. So those aren't, those aren't these ones, but rather the blue fancy ones from Harvest, I believe, is what you get from that. So when you stockpile a few of those, you can just use those instead of your core farming strategies. But don't really worry about that too much. This is good even if you don't even think about that because it's just extra higher tier maps. Again, this is all supposed to be as straightforward as possible, and that's the whole idea. Really, you're just running maps, and they just so happen to have essences, strong boxes, shrines, which is just extra monsters, and harbingers, which is just extra monsters that drop currency in them. And you just get more maps in general, and your maps have more rares, and the bosses and rares are dropping more currency. That's really all there is to it in the end, and that's what it's very focused on. Over here, though, we have one little extra bonus thing that I wanted to add in because I think it's just going to be super spicy. So I just went as simple with it as possible, and that is Abyss. So I don't really like Abyss, but this is good enough, I think, that it's worth including even if you don't love Abyss. This is not about the Abyssal Depths. You don't have to go into those at all for this, really. You probably should still. But this is more just about the regular Abyss encounters and specifically about jewels. 
So we've got areas have a chance to contain additional abysses per pack size. This is your enabler. You will see abysses occasionally, normally anyway, but this just means you'll see more. Don't worry about this. You don't have to think about it. If you're just alking your maps and running them, that's fine. That's good enough for this, for you to see extra abysses. All good stuff. You get some more monsters, you get a bit more XP. That's all fine. Then as we come up this way, here's the payoff and the reason why we take this in the first place. So we get 3% extra chance for abysses there on top. And then this one here, Corrupted Gaze. 20% of the time when a jewel drops from Abyss, it'll ha be corrupted and have five or six modifiers. This is very, very good. Because any Abyss jewel that drops with four properties has a decent chance of being worth five, 10, or 15 chaos. They're usually super easy to sell. Even if you don't really like trading or want to think about it too hard, just have a tab that's for 10 chaos items and put them in there. And then you're making 10 chaos that you weren't making before. Super easy. But if you actually do like a bit of trading or don't mind kind of getting into it and learning prices and stuff like that, you can earn a lot more when you find really good ones that are worth much more than that. Um, and that's just four property ones. Especially searching eye jewels on average are worth something if they have like one or two mod good mods together, uh, especially if they have any sort of nice enabling mods. And uh, minion jewels, summoner jewels are really good value on average as well. But in general, a lot of builds want Abyss Jewels. They're valued highly. People pay good money for them. And it's pretty easy for a four property to be worth money. So I keep saying four property being worth money quite commonly. This gives you a, a very good chance of getting five or six ones. And on average, you're going to find a lot of five or six ones as you get these Abysses. Sometimes they drop multiple jewels. Can they drop multiple jewels? I swear they drop multiple jewels sometimes. I might be wrong about that. Anyway, don't worry about that. <laughs> but the five or six properties are just, again, they're going to be that much more likely to have like two or three good modifiers to get. They can drop multiple jewels? I thought so, yeah. I thought so, cool. So that means you might get like three jewels from one and then 20%, probably one of those is going to be a corrupted one if you're lucky. Um, so those five or six modifier ones are just that much more likely to have two or three good modifiers. So there's your 10, 15 chaos jewel. And that's only thinking like just on the average, very commonly that's going to happen sort of deal. But with five or six property jewels, you also have the chance of getting a, a jewel that has five good properties together. And that is just unseen, unheard of up to this point. The power level of the mods on these are, can be very high. So uh, there's some nice combos of like crit multi, flat damage, life that you couldn't get before that you can get now. So And if you happen to get the dream, get a six property jewel with good rolls, with affixes that go together, then you're talking like, you know, mirror, mirror <laughs> jewels that are worth a mirror or many exalts or something like that. Something to dream and something to chase for, but just super high potential there with also the nice consistent money on average as well, just from the kind of regular okay jewels that drop that should be dropping pretty frequently. So I liked that enough to include it. But again, super optional, very easy to change this. If you don't like the abyss, you hate doing abysses, you don't want to figure out how much jewels are worth, you can very easily drop that. You have freed up another 12 points. You can pick up one or two other clusters with that for a specific mechanic. Maybe you really want delve. So you just type delve into the search bar. And you look where the Delve ones are highlighted. What have we got? Delve here. We can see Delve here, here, and here, and down there. You're like, okay, cool. I'm going to pick up the Delve nodes. I'll get some Delve Nico missions for three points. I'll pick up this cluster here. Seems pretty good. Maybe I want to get some Sulfite farming. Maybe I really want Packed with Energy. Easy stuff. Super easy. Yeah. Exile Ziggy. Wait. Why are we exiled? Did I, did I forget to mention Rogue Exiles? <gasps> did I forget the Rogue Exile strategy? Oh, I'm doing this live. <laughs> Did I not mention the Rogue Exiles strategy? Oh, yes, Rogue Exiles. <laughs> the uh, last thing I kind of sprinkled in here that I, I don't think I mentioned here, we've got uh, Ruckus for 20 additional Rogue Exiles, a little bit less than 10% of the time, super fun. Sometimes Rogue Exiles will appear in pairs as well, so that's a lot of extra Exiles. We have, where's the other ones? Why can't I click you all of a sudden? It's broken, there it is. And then we have over here... Exiles dropping additional currency items, so whenever they do appear, they'll be dropping additional currency. Very nice. 20% 20, uh, 20 chance for additional currency item drops. Uh, we got unique bosses uh, be having rogue exiles near them. So this is all a bunch of extra rogue exiles, right? So we got like a chance of seeing a ton of exiles. We've got a couple extra exiles, appear uh, exiles appearing whenever some appear implicitly or randomly, as they do sometimes. They're dropping extra currency. You're getting extra ones next to bosses sometimes. That's all just a lot of exiles. That drops a lot of rares, drops a lot of currency now as well. But then the big payoff is actually back here at the beginning. So you probably pick this up much later on. But uh, we have the big payoff here, which is, again, more rogue exiles here. And then 
exiles have 50% chance of having additional rewards. They get a little hat, which is a symbol that sits above their head that guarantees a reward. So it might be a currency, it could be, you know, sometimes it's weapons or armor, gems, whatnot. Uh, they can drop a whole bunch of different things. So that gives them all uh, half the time they'll have a hat. So there's there's your there's your payoff. So that's a nice little synergistic one that's super easy to grab. Again, optional. You can drop. You don't like the exile stuff. You trim it out and grab something else instead. So there's like a, a, a rambly explanation of like a core kind of just very straightforward. Everything's just kind of packaged into your map super neatly. Little strategy. Maybe it'll give you some ideas. Maybe you'll follow it and then change it later on. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's helpful. Anyway, folks. That's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching. <laughs> I almost completely forgot about the exiles. Oh no! <laughs> thanks, chat. <laughs> I almost forgot about one of the core parts. Oh no. <laughs> Good job. Thanks.